Yes, what we need to talk about <coughs> a little bit about are these uh, logarithms a little more. And uh, they do have some different properties. And <coughs> let me first of all just uh, explain or, or go through these properties that, that we'll use. And they'll be important properties because, yeah, they'll, they'll come up in a lot of different places. Uh, the first one is that <coughs> if I have the logarithm, number one property, if I have the logarithm base, the base can be anything, we usually denote it generically with an A, so base A, and I have <coughs> two things multiplied together inside my logarithm, it turns out I can expand those to be two logarithms, but the logarithms are not multiplied, they are added. <coughs> so going, going this direction anyway, yeah, it says uh, if I've got one logarithm, I can expand that into two uh, logarithms, and it turns out the logarithms are uh, added <coughs> if I expand them going that way. Um, <coughs> for example, if I have the log base 6 of, <coughs> uh, uh, let's just say, That is <coughs> two things. So we haven't had, had any come up yet where we've had two things inside a logarithm, but there will be uh, times when this, this will happen. Now, note there that that is multiplied in there, right? 8 times x is not usually written, but that is 8 times x. What this property allows us to do then is say, well, that's also then equal to the log base 6 of 8 plus the log base 6 of <clears throat> that going that direction is what we term uh, expanding. We'll go the other direction too. But for now, let's just look at it as expanding. Okay, so we expand the one logarithm into two. Um, <clears throat> now, this uh, may may or may not uh, make sense to you there, but different reasons. But let's t let's just take a look at at another one here. Let's say, uh, let's say, let's look at the logarithm of um, four times x. The reason I do this is just to show you that it does. This is this is how it has to work. <coughs> because what this property says is that's equal to what? Log base two of four times eight. Well, if I expand that, it's the log base two of four plus the log base two of eight. Right. Now, I can show you that these two things are equal because <coughs> this times this is 32, isn't it? And if I have the log base 2 of 32, I know the answer to that. What's the answer to that? What is the log base 2 of 32? Well, that gets back to the definition of log. This means <coughs> 2 to what power is 32, right? And so what would be the power of 2 that would be 32? It'd be the fifth, wouldn't it? Log base 2 of 32 is 5. Okay? Now what about these? Well, log base 2 of 4, that's asking me 2 to what power is 4, and that would be 2. And this is asking me 2 to what power is 8, and that would be 3. And what's 3 plus 2, or 2 plus 3? That is 5. So you see, those two things are indeed, uh, do indeed come out to be equal. Okay? All right, so property 2. <coughs> Property two is, one way to look at it is this. The log base A of U divided by V, well, if U times V inside there is adding, then what do you suspect log base A of U divided by V would be? Well, that would be subtraction. Yeah, if we expand this one logarithm with that, into two logarithms, it's the log subtracted. Log base A of U, the top, <coughs> minus the log base A 
of, uh, of V. <clears throat> and so, yeah, that one, an example, quick example. Uh, let's say we've got the log base 3 of uh, 7 over y. Well, that's then equivalent to the log base 3 of 7 minus the log base 3 of y. So plug in numbers, variables, whatever you want to there. If it's one divided by the other inside your logarithm, it turns into two logarithms, and they have the same base. You don't change these bases, but it's seven. Uh, the log base 3 is 7 minus, minus the log base 3 of y. Okay? And that kind of follows suit again. If you want to look at <coughs> an example we can show that this is true on, uh, go back to log base 2 here. Um, that one, that one says uh, log base 2 is 64 divided by 8. Well, that's log base 2 of 64 minus log base 2 of 8. And <coughs> this, well, this, this one we actually say that's the log base 2 of 8. If we simplify it, then log base 2 of 8 is 3. Uh, this is log base 2 of 64. 2 to what power is 64? 2 to the 5th is 32. So 2 to the 6th is 64. Log base 2 of 8 is 3, so 6 minus 3, yeah, see, they do come out to be equal. So it is a valid, a valid property there, okay? All right, <coughs> property 3. Is this one. It's the log base A of u to the nth power. <clears throat> log base a of u to the nth power. So now we've got uh, something to a power inside my logarithm. Well, it turns out expanding that, <clears throat> what we do is, yeah, it turns out that this uh, power can be brought out in front. And we can say this is equal to n times the log base a of u. See what I did there? All I did was the power came out front, and now it's uh, just times times your uh, log base A of U. Okay, so uh, <coughs> log base 5 of, and we'll see this quite a lot. Say we've got the log base 5 of X squared, and I don't want to have X squared in there, so uh, <coughs> yeah, what happens is this number in front comes out and it becomes 2 times the log base 5 then of just x. See that? Okay? So those are the three, uh, and you can prove it uh, kind of like the other ones, but <clears throat> or show it. But those are the three, three properties of logarithms that we do want, want you to know about there. Okay? So they are, <coughs> are a little bit different. This times gives you a plus, the divide gives you a minus, and that one comes out like that. So those are important, important little properties. So what we do with that now then, <coughs> keeping those in mind, is using the properties there, let's expand uh, <coughs> couple of examples, okay? All right, first one, let's do expand uh, log base 5 of 4x squared y. Log base 5 of 4x squared y. And let, me <coughs> let me write those properties again. Property 1, log base a of u times b equals log base A of U plus log base A of V. Log base A of U divided by V is log base A of U minus log base A of V. And then log base A of U to the N is N times log base A of U. All right, keeping those in mind. Well, 
So going, uh, going the way I have them written, left to right there, that's expanding. So when I look at expanding, I look for the multiplication and the division. And in this case, what do I have? What operations? Well, I've got actually two multiplications, don't I? It's 4 times x squared times y. So I've got two multiplications there, and those expand into three, so I've got three parts, so these are going to expand into three logarithms. All the log base five. And what's the operation between them? Well, multiplication inside leads to expansion by adding, right? So all these logs will be uh, <coughs> the three logs added together. With me? Now, what else could I do to expand using one of those properties? You see something else? Yeah, what about the x squared there? Yeah. Also expanding, I can bring out that power. The power that I have just comes in the front, doesn't it? So it would be log base. Now, it's just the front of that one. So it would be log base 5 of 4 still, plus 2 log base 5 of x, plus log base 5 of y. That would be the complete expansion of that particular one logarithm, okay? All right, <clears throat> what about this one? Expand the log base 3 4x cubed over the square root of y. A couple of uh, nice little points about this one. First point is, <clears throat> we talked about this last time, but uh, square roots. When we're working with logarithms, a lot of times we want to write roots, not as roots, but as powers. How can I write the square root, remember, as a power? How can I write this y squared or it's what? Not y squared. It's the one half, yeah. Remember the uh, square root. We need to write that as 1 over 2. It is the square root, the second root. And so that's going to be the denominator. Basically tells me the denominator. If that was the cube root, that would be 1 third. The root is the denominator of your power. So yeah, that's the first note there. And then the other thing is <clears throat> here, well, you can look at it, uh, I guess, a couple of different ways. But uh, don't I have here uh, multiplication and division? <clears throat> let's do uh, let's do the division first. So since I have dividing, you divide by v, so to speak, then those turn into two logarithms subtracted, right? So this is going to become then the log base 3 of 4x cubed minus the log base 3 of y to the 1 half. Okay? But what else do I have? Well, I also have go ahead and say I've got multiplication, so I can split that up, and multiplication turns into addition of two logs, right? And so that'll be log base 3 of 4 plus the log base 3 of x cubed minus the log base 3 of y to the 1 half. But last but not least here, then what? The powers, right? If you have a power on the inside, then it comes out on the outside on the uh, in the front. So this becomes log base 3 of 4 plus 3 minus 1 half log base 3 of y. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right. Let me do another one. <clears throat> this one is log base 8, expand, again, log base 8 of the cube root of z minus 1 over x squared y to the fifth. <coughs> now again, there's a couple of uh, ways we can go go with this. 
But if, let's first of all just look at it. Well, I've got divide. Okay, so let's divide them. <coughs> if we've got inside two things divided, that turns into subtract, right? So I've got log base 8 of the cube root of z minus 1 minus the log base 8 of x squared y to the fifth. <clears throat> However, now though, don't I have on this one a times? I do. And, uh, well, let, let's talk about this one first. Now, there's a little more expanding I can do on that one because cube root, I can write that as a power. What power is the cube root? Well, if the square root's one half, the cube root is one third. Yeah, the root is the denominator of your power. There's that. Now, <clears throat> minus then, okay, well, those are multiply. And so we know multiplying turns into addition. However, in that case, if you write it like that, you do need parentheses. You do need parentheses. Why would I need parentheses there? Well, the parentheses is needed because this minus is going to affect both of those. It's going to turn that into minus. And another way you can look at it, if I, if I don't put parentheses around that, that's saying that's a plus, and that would mean <coughs> uh, that would mean that it would be in the top if I work my way back. So, uh, yeah, they both need, to be, uh, both need to be minus there. And so final, uh, final answer here would be log base 8, z minus 1. The power comes out. He said that <coughs> both of those are going to be minus now. And that'll be 2 log base 8 of x. And that'll be minus 5 log base 8 of y. because that minus does affect both of those. Another way you can look at it, since they're both in the denominator, they both need to be minus. Uh, that's another way you can look at it in the bottom. <coughs> All right, then the other point here to make is, can I expand more on that? I've got z minus 1. Can I expand a minus? Can't. There isn't a property. I, those are the three, three ones that we have. And a minus in the ins on the inside or a plus on the inside, you can't expand, though. There's not a property where you say, well, log base, <coughs> you might note here, if you have u minus v, you can't expand that. And if it's log base, say, of u plus v, you can't expand that. Add those to your list there. Yeah, if it's minus or plus on the inside, you can't expand. There's just not a property that works for expanding those. Okay?